I've got to be honest, having been an Englishman in Mexico for a long period now, I have at times felt somewhat left out because I'm not an American YouTuber in Mexico. I've always been slightly naive and fascinated as to the amazement that many Americans have with Mexico. Mexico for me has always been just another country and there's never really been anything that's connected me to my homeland, England, until now. That's right people, this video is quite possibly one of the most highly anticipated videos of the year. Welcome to Real del Monte. Hola amigos! So you're probably wondering, how on earth does a small, tiny magic town or Puebla Magico in Mexico, such as Real del Monte, also known as Mineral del Monte, have such an interesting history with England? I bet you never expected that, right? Specifically Cornwall. Cornwall is a county in the southwest of England. And just like many states, cities and small towns in this area of Mexico, Real del Monte has an extensive and immense history when it comes to gold and silver mining. Gold and silver was originally discovered in the state of Hidalgo during Spanish colonial times and mining was in operation for many, many years. And as a result of flooding in the mines, mining basically ground to a halt in the state of Hidalgo. However, in the early 1800s, English miners from Cornwall came to the state of Hidalgo, Pachuca, Real del Monte, with new innovative equipment to not only resolve the issue of flooding, but also to rejuvenate the mining industry in this state. And as a result, this town has such a mix of England and Mexico. I'm absolutely overwhelmed at this point. And in this video, we're going to be checking out some food, which is influenced by England. We're going to be checking out some architecture, a cemetery, you name it. There's so much here. Many of you have told me to come here, advised me to come here. It's probably the best way of saying it. And I'm really happy I'm here. So let's get going. Centro Historico is peaceful, kind of. Blue skies, colorful architecture. And in the middle there is a fountain and I've read that actually came from England. I could be wrong. And around the bottom you have these four tortoises, or could they be turtles? And useless fact of the day, when I was younger I had a tortoise, a pet tortoise, called Fred. So that's another thing that kind of connects me back to England again. We're going to start off our little tour of Rio del Monte by having a look at some of the architecture in this wonderful Pueblo Magico. There's a wonderful church. It's an orange or peach colour, I would say. And Church names always test my pronunciation, so here goes. Parroquia Nuestra Señora del Rosario. Oh, that's a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> Let's have a look inside. Stunning, spectacular, grand Mexican church. One of the best things about Mexico, in my opinion. I, I feel really lucky that I can just walk into a, a church like this in complete silence. I'm the only one in here and marvel at the size of it, the organ up the top, the architecture, those gold things. What are they called? Are they like the, the sun's rays or something? I don't know, but they're really pretty. I see them in many Mexican churches. And um, this one kind of reminds me of the one in uh, Real de Catorce. Um, in the fact that it's in quite a small town and there's no one really around and um, it's not as you know grand in terms of the amount of gold and things like the one in Lax Color but it's still got that amazing look. Just listen. Silence. When I got off the Colectivo from Pachuca this morning the first thing I noticed and it was quite an emotional moment was the difference in architecture so 
usually in towns like this Mexican buildings and houses would usually have like flat roofs at least that's what I've seen in the past but in the El Monte it's different roofs like that which you would have in England and walking up these hills it very much felt like I was walking through somewhere in Cornwall Devon southwest England which you know my family live in Devon so it's especially poetic I think the fact that I'm here now going back to England in a week's time so uh, as you can tell from my voice already I'm getting quite choked up <laughs> Life in Mexico would not be complete without a bottle of squirt. This video is not sponsored, by the way. And um, we're going to talk about pasties now. I described this in the Pachuca video, which you can check out up above somewhere. Um, Cornish pasties. Where do I even start? One of the things that has come from England in terms of the uh, influence is the food in Leo del Monte. And there is a pasty festival every year. I think it's in October, so I've missed it. No, but... The thing that I've read about it is that the people of Rio del Monte are very appreciative of the English miners in relation to the fact that not, not only did they rejuvenate Rio del Monte in terms of mining, the mining industry, but also nowadays they give the locals a source of income because pasties are everywhere. I read that there are around 30 pasty restaurants in Rio del Monte, but honestly, I, it feels like there's about 3,000 because every other building is a pasty place. The next video is gonna be all about pasties, but even so, we're going to have one today because there's a place just down there that I saw walking from the Collectiva, which is quite possibly the best thing I've ever seen ever in my entire life. <laughs> Let's go. Look at this, amigos. And also English people. <laughs> Autentico pasti inglés. Pastis y empanadas. And this place, as I walked past, I saw this on the door. Pasti al pastor. Solo aquí. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know from previous videos how much I absolutely love tacos al pastor, but here is a pasty al pastor. But I haven't looked at it yet. Let's open and have a look. Ooh, that is a Cornish pasty if I haven't seen one in my life before. Uh, <laughs> and it's got that orangey colour. Look at it. Oh, beautiful. Let's um, tear it open. Oh, look at that, man. Look at the Al Pastor. Oh, God. Let's eat it. You can't get any more Mexican than this. Sitting on the floor outside a torteria with Pasti Al Pastor. Let's go. Stunning. Stunning. Oh, here comes the spice. Okay. And you know what? This is a pasty that tastes as close as to an English pasty as I can think, even though it's al pastor. It's weird, because a lot of English pasties are meat, you know, like um, beef with potato and vegetables, things like that. But this kind of feels like it, because, you know, when you are in England and you go to a bakery and you get a pasty, it's full of meat, and this is exactly that. And the thing about Mexico, I've said about before, is that, you know, most Mexican bakeries, it's predominantly like sweet items, but coming to a place like this, to have a pasty with al pastor in it. Can you, can we just take a moment to th stop with the amazement of this? It's an al pastor pasty. <sighs> this is one of two mine museums in the El Del Monte. I'm gonna go to the other one. It's a bit of a walk. And the thing I will say, as you can see from this building, it's so English. It feels like somewhere in anywhere in England to do with industry or mining or anything. And um, the thing I will say about Mexico is that we compare places very easily, especially when you've been here a long time. But the El Del Monte is absolutely unique. I've gone for a long walk heading to this mine and just look at this reminds me of England southwest of England with these hills and the roads down there it's like Devon where, where I will be very soon I'm approaching the mine and look through this fence look at the walls down there this is England it's like an old castle or something in in terms of what it looks like you know these stone walls let's go down look at this it's a mine 
it feels exactly like England right now. <sighs> Look at that. And as always, we have an extremely fetching hat. I'm not an English builder. You right, mate? How's it going? Look at this, amigos. We're down in the mines in Dia del Monte. This is like a life achievement right now. I read that there was a tour, but clearly not. You can just go down here yourself, which actually I think I prefer. Watch your head, as always, down the mines. Okay, so there is a tour, but I had to catch up with it. As per usual, no idea what he's talking about. He's talking about life in the mines, I think, vaguely. And um, I'm just looking around me. Um, there's like a moss on the rock and it's glistening with water. And you can also see like the glistening of silver in the rock as well. Um, it's another mine. Right, we're out of the mine. My fetching hard hat is off. Remind me never to wear one of them again. And anyway, I mentioned about Spanish. So yeah, my Spanish listening isn't great, but I think you, I can get the gist of what he was talking about down there. But I think it's more about the experience, you know? I didn't realize Mexico had such a history with mining before I came here. Now I've been to three mines. So I would absolutely recommend anyone coming to Mexico to, to do that purely for the experience, even if you don't fully understand what's being said by the tour guide. But from what I could gather, he talked about the experience down the mines obviously it's a, it was an extremely difficult strenuous activity damp wet cold dirty etc he talked about toilets he showed us toilets where people would go to the toilet in a bucket of sand <laughs> he talked about the depth they would go down to when they were working and what they would do in the event of an accident it's unimaginable you know and what i have read about not only mexican mines but me mines all over the world is that slavery was a thing free labor People that ran the mines would take a lot of money off people as they leave, so the people that worked here wouldn't earn much anyway. So, um, just goes to show, you know, these people did so much in terms of the country's economy and industry, um, so we only have them to thank, I think. Right, I was going to sit with those dogs down there, but they started barking at me. What is it with dogs in Mexico that hate me? Where are the cats? Um, and the other thing is about football. I didn't know that football was introduced to Mexico via these Cornish miners. They had a football team in Pachuca and um, they had the names were like William, Percy, Albert, John, you know, typical English names. And it, when you think just how fanatical Mexicans are about football, it's astounding that, you know, that came from England. And also things like cricket, tennis, rugby union, you know, English games that have come from England. Um, and I'm in the place where it all started in Mexico anyway. Brilliant. It's time to go to the cemetery. Okay, believe it or not, I didn't bring a change of clothes with me. It is the next day. We flashed forward about 18 hours because I came here yesterday within opening hours and it was closed. Where am I? Let's look at the sign. Right, cue overly dramatic strings or potentially piano copyright royalty free music because we are at the Pantheon Inglés, the English cemetery. I'm so excited because this is somewhere that I've wanted to come since day one. So it's the first day anyone ever advised me to come here because this place has a connection with England. As you can see, 1851 it was established. Cornwall, miners from Cornwall, their presence was vital for the exploitation of the mines. There are 750 tombs here, not just Cornish miners, there are, I believe there are people from Germany, Italy and other countries as well. So let's go and see if it's open. And for the second day in succession, it's closed. There's a padlock. The sign says it's open from 9 till 5 Tuesday to Sunday. Um, today is Thursday, uh, it's about 11am, um, so unfortunately this is the only shot we're going to be getting of the Pantheon Inglés. Never mind, these things happen, you can't get everything in life, but at least I'm here, at least I can see it. I have eyes. And I wanted to say while I was here, the fact that Mexican cemeteries are always quite elaborate and intricate in terms of the design of gravestones and things like that, and I've said, I said in San Luis that English cemeteries tend to not be like that as much and it's interesting because you know England Mexico predominantly Christian Catholic countries in terms of religion so you would think there would be similarities but there are definitely differences and I think from what I can see of it it very much does look more like an English cemetery <laughs> Acá de este lado. 
Right, my persistence has paid off with this cemetery because you're not going to believe what I did. I was walking back down and I saw the tour buses coming up up hill and I thought, why are they going up there? It's closed. And then I thought, maybe the drivers or something have got the key to get in. I came up the hill, saw a school trip or something like that, walking up, up the hill. And then the woman that I asked earlier, is it closed or not? She's the tour guide. I thought she was just a random walking a dog. But now I'm in the cemetery, finally. <laughs> As I said earlier, before I could get in, it is so much more of an English cemetery. You know, English gravestones will often have all of this text on there. In loving memory, you know, it's, it's really weird to be in Mexico and be seeing English on gravestones rather than Spanish. Henry, Alfred and William, I can't read the surname, the beloved children of William and Annie. <sighs> Classic English names, you know, this is, it's surreal that, you know, there are English people buried in, in a cemetery in Mexico. It's astounding. I think this cemetery really sums up what Riel del Monte is about. It's not an English town, it's a Mexican town with English influence. The key word is influence. And I think the same goes for this cemetery because I must say, having lived in the UK for many years, some cemeteries and graveyards can be extremely run down and quite basic in terms of the style of gravestone. But I think these, they very much look English with a bit of a twist of Mexican Mexican cemeteries, um, you know, with the crosses on the top and they're slightly more elaborate with the little, well, little statues on them, things like that. Names like Frederick, Laura, Hilda, Maria. I can also see German names like Ludwig and Guillermo, Italian. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. So amigos, that was Real del Monte or Mineral del Monte. We finally got into the Pantheon Inglés. See, if you're, if you're persistent enough, you can get what you want in life, all right? And uh, going back to the beginning of what I said at the beginning of this video in terms of feeling left out in Mexico since the beginning, because there's never really been anything that's connected Mexico with where I'm from. For the first time today, that has happened. Mexico and England have come together. I feel like I've come full circle and it's quite appropriate and poetic, actually, that this is my last stop in Mexico for this year. I'm going back to England next week. And, um, it, you know, it was just amazing to see English names, English people buried in Mexico. And for me, that's really cool because it shows that there's part of my history in Mexico, if you know what I mean. All right. So um, next up is another video from Leo del Monte. We haven't finished yet, Hans. <laughs> um, and I'll see you soon. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to do the like and leave a comment. What do you think of Leo del Monte? Um, and I'll see you soon. Hasta luego.